Hello, greetings. Uh, I think there's going to be oh, a number of people that will be interested in this uh, service work here. Obviously, this is a TAD 4000, TD 4001 compression driver. Now, these came in to have me uh, put uh, TAD beryllium diaphragms in them. The customer brought me the drivers and the diaphragms. Uh, and I ran into some issues and one was the the gap was misaligned so I had to discharge the magnets and you can see that its magnet is totally discharged um, take the screws out to the top plate. These are all the screws right here that were that bolt the face plug uh, magnet assembly onto that like that. So all the screws have to come out. Got to take all the take this glue off and put some new glue on it, and then reshim it. Uh, I built up these. Uh, shim pieces that are 30 thousandths of an inch because that's what the gap measured so how do you get the gap you take the the inside diameter of the top plate which was 4.02 inches and then the diameter of the face plug which was 3.96 inches which gives you a difference of 0 0.06 you divide that by 2.03, that gives you the gap. So, uh, this has got a little bit of rust inside. I'm going to uh, scrub that, clean that out. And it's got other, a little bit of other debris in there too. You can see when I put some masking tape in there. Some bits and pieces come out but I'm gonna clean that up realign the gap and then put the diaphragm in so stay tuned All right, so this TAD 4001, this is one of two. I've got another one to do. It is all back together. Here's the factory diaphragm. Uh, let's do a sweep test. That's at uh, about 13K right there. Clean all the way down to 200 hertz. This is good to go. You'll also notice that these TAD drivers, well this one anyway, this has felt. And this looks like it's a factory die cut piece specifically for these drivers. That's the way to go. The uh, JBL foam rots. JBL used to use felt, but, uh, uh, but they switched to... Uh, foam rubber and it rots and just turns to goo and this is the way this is the right way to do it all right all together loading caps back on one uh little detail that i liked what i wanted to do on this was i replaced the uh, cap bolt with uh, stainless steel rather than than the black i think it uh it looks kind of cool plus Stainless steel won't rust. These uh, these black ones will uh, can have a tendency to rust. So uh, one more to do. Next chapter, maybe, huh? All right. Here's the second of uh, these two Tad uh, TD four thousand ones. First one's done. Uh, 
But this one, the the first one also, the magnet charge was down. And the reason being, I believe, is because these have been dropped. How do I know that? Well, the gap, if you can see, the gap is inconsistent by a few thousandths all the way around. And the magnet is down a couple of thousand gauss. So this one's going to have to be taken apart too. And there's all kinds of crud in the in the gap. I'll show you with a piece of tape here. It's a challenge to do this with one hand. Let's we'll see if I can. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Let me put the... Run the... See, there's all kinds of stuff in there. Look at that. So anyway, this is going to get the same treatment. Uh, we'll do a final sweep after it's done. Maybe I'll show the guts uh, after I take it apart. Okay. Well, this has got rust in the threads, so this is going to be uh, quite a bit more intense to clean up. But, see what I can do. So, here I got a clean out the threads. Now watch, I've sprayed some super slick stuff in here. So the threads are pretty rusty. You kind of clean it out a little bit with a Q-tip. Look at that. Oof. So these are, this thread is actually a quarter twenty. So I'm going to chase the threads here and clean it up. Now the reason I have to do this is because to separate the whole assembly, I need to put a couple of screws in here, a couple of machine screws, a quarter quarter twenty machine screws, and then I tighten them to actually push the magnet assembly out away from the housing. So look at the rust that comes out of these thread holes. Two down, two to go. I gotta clean the clean the tap with a wire brush like that. I do this with <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Alright. Alright, so Maybe uh, people are wondering, or how, how do I separate this driver? So here's quarter twenty machine bolts, uh, and you just turn it until it separates. I've discharged the magnet, which really helps. Uh, otherwise, these things are a bear to work with if the magnets are live. So anyway, that's how you do it, and uh, next step's coming up, I guess. Okay. All right, well, this one didn't come apart as easily as the other one did, and so obviously this one has been torn apart before, and so the throat came out with it, and there's a lot of rust in here which would be indicative of those bolt holes, but yeah, look at all that rust, so that's got to be cleaned out. So, those of you that do know, these drivers are still, are, are now made again, 
and uh, Pro Audio Design, Patty, in I think they're in New York, is the distributor. Well, these, these drivers are now, this driver is now $5,400 uh, MSRP. So, is it worth it to fix this? You betcha! <laughs> Uh, $10,000 worth of drivers right here, uh, new anyway. And uh, so these have kind of been through the ringer, so I'm going to fix them up and make them work. All righty. All righty. The uh, second TAD TD4001 is complete. Do a little sweep test. Clean and good. Button them up. All right. See you later.